Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we got uh, me and David here, we're missing Bill this time, but he'll be on the next one, don't worry. Um, we had a previous episode that got a lot of likes, a lot of watches, we got a lot of comments, and it was, uh, it was us hiking with our families, and we actually fresh cracked this bottle, or, or one similar to this bottle, and it was really good. And so we actually said in that, we're gonna link it right here, or right there, I don't know, one of the other corners, uh, we promised that we would do a side-by-side -side comparison to this tin type. So that's what we've got today is the tin type, which is actually kind of apropos with your profession when you're doing a tin type. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of fun. Uh, but they, they put these out once a year. It is seven years old. It is MGP juice that has been aged down in Mississippi. And as we all know, especially here where we are, Mississippi's hot. We're not in Mississippi. Mississippi is hot and really humid. And that does work the bourbon a little bit different down there than it would if it was in, say, Kentucky or Absolutely, yeah. uh, Michigan or even South Carolina. It's just hot and sticky yep. down there in Mississippi. Um, so this is seven years old um, out of Cathead Distillery, which we've talked about before. They make some great stuff. They've got some That's right. um, honeysuckle vodka. In that honeysuckle right? vodka, yeah. So I one time, this was, seems like a lifetime ago, I had never had a Moscow mule before, and so this guy was like, well, you need to try this Moscow mule. What did you say? It was your with, sister, wasn't it? Uh, it was a friend of my sister. Was it? Okay. So yeah, let's put it that way. <laughs> so um, anyway, it was like, this is honeysuckle vodka, and I was like, well, okay, that sounds weird, but I'll try it. I'm from the South. I like honeysuckle. I don't know if honeysuckle's still around, but um, anyway, so that's, that is Cathead Distillery. That's where I became aware of what Cathead Distillery was. But like Jennings said, not all good bourbon comes out of Kentucky. And you do have some temperature differences, climate differences that are going to affect the taste. But we did really enjoy this. Uh, this, this was a special, you know, select barrel, a barrel select. Um, for, well, you and I shopped at two different stores. So I had one and that was, I think, the one, if I remember correctly. I um I'll have to check, but I'm pretty sure I've got both. They're both mine was the one that um, that we opened. Anyway, they they are very similar. But, but this one was this one was selected by a local ABC store here correct. in our area. Yes, that bought the whole barrel of that and then had it bottled and they sold it locally. Right. right? This one was a release nationally that they did, but this one was at least four years because it's Kentucky straight bourbon. It's whiskey. not age stated, and we okay. have discussed this before. So if it's right. straight bourbon, it's required to be a minimum of two years of age. That's right. And if it, there's not an age statement on the label, then it has to be four. So we're- Minimum of four. A minimum of four, that's right. So to be called straight bourbon, it has to be two, but to not have an age statement, it has to be at least four. And generally speaking, when there's not an age statement and it's straight bourbon, it's right at that four year. They're trying to get this stuff out and get it sold, you know, as quickly as they can. So it's doubtful that it's, it's much more than that four year mark. And I remember tasting this last time, this was about, about six months ago, roughly, when we opened that on a hike or after a hike. And I remember it being really good. It was, it was. You could tell it was young. It was really bright. It was really floral. Mm -hmm. um, didn't have a whole lot of depth of flavor. It did have some. The, the proof helps. Yeah, it that. didn't have a very long finish. That's right. Um, and this does have a the mash bill listed on here. It's a seventy five percent corn, twenty one percent rye, and then four percent malted barley. The tin type does not have a mash bill listed, but it does have an age. It does have an age statement of seven years. So the. Uh, the private barrel is a 116.4 proof, whereas this one is in the 120s. Is this one's right? a 122. 122, okay. So 122.3, so. So a there is higher. a difference in, in the proof for sure. And the color. Yeah, the color is definitely different. They've got a lot, you know, lighter color, obviously, on the younger, what we assume to be the younger, the younger age of bourbon. Let's go ahead and pour these. Absolutely. So we'll so, do, you know, we'll, this side, that side. So, like that. so what we'll do is like where these bottles are right here, like he's going to pour that one and that one, and then I'll pour this yeah. one and this one. So we'll keep them lined up for you guys so y'all can see which ones we're tasting. You've seen other episodes. You know that I'm not always the best at putting them in the right glass. We sometimes lose track of it's what's okay. where, but... It happens. As long as it's all good. We have fun in the end. <laughs> do a little uh, water. Cleanse the palate. Um, I'll give a shout-out. David usually gives a shout-out, but I'm going to do a shout-out this time. We're gonna shout out to Brandy. Uh, Brandy watches this channel and her and her husband and 
they've been uh, instrumental in getting me some some things that I've been looking for up where they used to live. Uh, they're now down here near us, which is great. We're happy y'all are back, or I should say, y'all are happy y'all are here. Uh, so cheers you, to you guys. Cheers, cheers to y'all. Um, let's start with the old soul we did on that hike. Good. And see how that lands. Well, you can tell that's young, can't you? Yeah. And usually when it's younger like that, there is a brighter, kind of sharper, almost. Uh, it's a little, little punchier, I think, on the nose it sometimes. Is. If those of you that like citrus drinks, if you like a margarita or you like, you know, tequila sunrise, something that has more citrus in it, you may want to try a younger bourbon. You may not want all those complex, deep flavors that that we like. Uh, you may yeah. want something a little more bright. And so a little younger age statement on a bourbon may be better for you if you like that. So Now, Jennings, I mentioned this in a previous episode. I want to throw that out there again because... I have had several people ask me who are not used to drinking bourbon, is there a right way to drink bourbon so that you can get those tasting notes that we, we throw around these, you know, ideas on tasting notes and stuff like that, which are very subjective, I will say, but generally if you're going to nose something, you know, smell it. Um, I do mouth open and mouth closed and there is bananas foster on the, uh, Big time. on the seven year on the tin type. So I know it's both of them first. I don't guess you have to do it that way, but there's a lot more, there's a lot more story going on here on the tin type. I'll leave that guy there. All right, so I'm trying, trying the... Uh, oh, it's not even close. The nose on the seven year tin type is amazing. They're yep. both good. They're both good. That extra age though, these are both uncut, unfiltered, from what we can tell. And what they do on these, this is worth noting, when you buy one of these national releases like this that's in every state, or most states, they are taking an absolute ton of bottles. I mean, excuse me, ton of barrels. Barrels, right. And they're mixing them all together, they're blending them, they have master blenders that do this. And then they are getting it, they're not going to proof it down, they're just going to leave it at whatever the proof is after it's blended. Whereas this is out of one barrel this is one barrel there's no blending you're not getting different flavors from different barrels and different ages and different this and that this is one barrel this is a true single barrel cast strength unfiltered uncut where this is blended now the nice thing about a blended one and we've talked about this before you get a blended cast strength like this it's consistent they're usually consistently better than a single barrel because single barrel it could be a really good barrel or it could be an okay barrel you can find a honey barrel or it could be a, an okay barrel mm -hmm. in this case this tin type is this is, not this is very difference. good yeah there are benefits to both the consistency is nice but then having the uniqueness of a single barrel is also kind of interesting too and i think that's why you keep going back and you buy you know different iterations or, you know different barrel picks from different stores to see if there's one that you like better because again this is a That's subjective crazy a very subjective game here that, that 10 type 10 is type is rocking it's crazy it's delicious that 10 type i could put that against just about anything else i've ever tasted i mean that is like ridiculously good and again this is not touched the state of kentucky which I almost feel blasphemous saying, you know, because like, Kentucky being the bourbon capital it's of the right. world, but it's all right. good product, you know, if you've got, if you've got a good master distiller, I mean, and those extra couple of years, however many they are, really makes a difference mm -hmm. in that flavor profile. You're really getting some of those flavors out of the barrel. It's obviously the same or really similar distillate. So it really comes down to how long they're aging. It's it, possible aging it's the it. exact same distillate. It could be. It could yeah. be. That tin type though is like thick. Yeah. It lingers for a minute. It's got a much better smell. And you talk about the viscosity of it and you can see if you've ever been a wine drinker, you know, you kind of, you know, turn it in your glass and you're going to watch what they call the legs fall. And that's kind of where the, the oils and the, and the liquid will sort of stick to the side of the glass and sort of drop. That's called the legs. So you can see a lot greater viscosity in the uh, in the seven year than you can in the in and the it is straight bourbon. It's thick. 
It is. It hangs around. It's got a depth of flavor that is... In a very good way. Very good. There is kind of a Bananas Foster thing. Not as We've much, We've talked though. about that with Jack Daniels before. Mm -hmm. Not as much as Jack Daniels. No, it's a different... It's not the same as Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels Barrel Proof has a distinct Bananas Foster and caramel and brown sugar and molasses and all that. It's very upfront about it, too. Big this time. is a little bit more subtle. It is. But I appreciate it. And, you know, this is like... We just opened this. So this is not some... Yeah. I think it's been open for a while. This one's been open for about six months. We fresh cracked this one for you guys on the trail. Y'all probably watched that video. If you didn't watch it, once again, we'll have the link up above previously in the video. You can go and watch it again. We drank out of those little uh, red collapsible the cups. Little silicone things. I still have mine. It stays in my backpack. Do you? I mean, Good. you know, you're walking along the trail. You got seven miles in. Hey, I kind of want a bourbon. Get your little sample bottles and pour them into a, pour them into a cup. Why not? get you a life straw and use that to get some water out of the creek and drink out of that little shot that's glass right. so yeah that's good i do love some hiking though this is good hiking weather mm -hmm. we're definitely getting into that aren't we yeah thanks for sharing this is good stuff who's sharing i am a huge fan of this tin type yeah this is very good I think I've got a bottle of this at the office. Do you really? I think I do. You have a tin type at the office? I do office? have a tin type. You do for now. <laughs> I'm making mine snatch this, that this one up. This is my office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed in my office. <laughs> I got your key. It's all good. Yeah, that. If you go back to that, that old soul, not the tin type, but the regular old soul, private barrel select, it is much more bright. I almost get like a, a fruity floral smell on that one. I get a candy smell. Yeah, that is what it is. Candy, isn't it? What candy is that, though? Skittles or something. You know what it is? Airheads. Could be. You know what it is? Laffy Taffy. I'm sorry, Laffy Taffy is what I meant to say. Yeah. It is that, that cherry Laffy Taffy. Totally. Holy moly. That's what that That's is. That's exactly it? what that is. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's been Halloween wow. recently. The kids <laughs> have come home with a lot of candy. That's Maybe true. that's coloring my thoughts a little bit. If you I guys want to send us some Cherry Laffy Taffy in the mail, we'll put our uh, mailing address down here. we got a P.O. Box you can send them to. We won't be mad about that. You, you know, we've done candy. bourbon pairings with Girl Scout cookies. We did. But why couldn't we do bourbon pairings with Halloween candy? That's actually not a horrible idea. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Bought for food. Turn those uh, subscribe buttons on. I think it's yep. down below down here. Turn that subscribe button on and it'll ding when we put one out. Put a new video out. Maybe we'll do that next. That it's would not be a okay. bad idea. We should do that. I know we have some candy left here. At least I do. From the trick-or-treating season. Bags. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I bought it to give Our out. kids and have been trick-or-treating three yeah. times already this season. Mine's not been at all, so. One time's too many, but whatever. <laughs> Yes, if you guys see this in the store, I would definitely pick this up. Yes. This is definitely worth having. I think MSRP is right around 100 bucks. Yeah, and I was going to say, it's not a cheap bottle, mm -hmm. but it's also not like a difficult to find. Or at least I've seen it on the shelf a lot. Maybe it is difficult to find now. I don't know. You know, this almost is reminiscent of the 1910 from Old Forester, but it's a barrel strength version of that. Uh, you know, they, they actually put, they put out an extra, extra aged... Um, 1910 from Old Forester. I need to go to the distillery yeah. to get that one. I didn't get one of those. I would have liked one of those. If you guys have got one of those you want to send my way, I won't be mad about it. Love some 1910. Oh, man, so good. I would love to see a 1910 barrel strength. Old Forester, we're talking to you. We would love to see a 1910 barrel strength. That would be... That would be fire. Oh, it'd be incredible. Good idea. I know we've had some barrel strengths from them. That's just a regular barrel strength, single selects they put out, but that would be really good. This is incredible. You know, you get some of these bourbons every once in a while that you take a sip, and after about a sip or two, it's like you keep wanting to come back to it. The smells. Yeah, the, the nose. This had me in the nose. I mean, the nose is unbelievable. It is. I agree. I've been drinking the uh, private barrel, but that and it does give that candy smell, but that the tin type is... The tin type is where it's at. So much more depth. 
you get more sweetness out of the wood. There's so oh, much man, more. Well, there's more time for it to interact with the with the you know the chemicals, well, especially with the that sugars heat. and stuff in the the heat in Mississippi. I haven't been to Mississippi much. Oh yeah, my mom's actually from Mississippi. Believe it or not, my cousin studied down there, so it's got to be hot. Starkville. My mother's from Macomb. Macomb, Mississippi. I got another pour of that. That's really good. I'm yeah, not y'all need to pick this one up. It's kind of neat too. If you guys are in to you know either photography or music, this particular bottle they they worked with MusicMaker.org and. They're trying to do some partnerships. It's called the Music Maker Foundation. It's musicmaker.org. You can check that out, see if you see something on there. That's great. Well, and there's, we've mixed sort of the, you know, the visual auditory arts with the art of whiskey making. Because this is an art form. Which is definitely an art form. Definitely an art form. I would say whiskey is a perfect combination of art and science combined. I would agree with that. I'm not the first person to say that. I've heard that said before. I don't remember who said it, but I feel like it's extremely accurate and very deep. But it is. I mean, it's it an, it's a it's an art form that's a combination of science and science and art. And you know, and, and like art, it's something you can't rush. Right. This barrel time makes a huge difference. It does make a difference. I have had some young whiskeys that I like, but Wait, generally. You know my kind of magic magic number is that seven to eight year for you. You like a little bit higher I like age. You like the 12 to 13s. I do. But I would say that when you hit that seven to eight years, you're into some territory that's most likely going to be pretty enjoyable for the most part. It's pretty good. There are exceptions to everything. Always. Which is what's great about bourbon. There's so many nuances that you can enjoy or... Yes, y'all leave some comments. If you guys have had one of these barrel selects that you think is better than the tin type, leave us a comment on which one that is. Maybe we can uh, yeah. figure that out. Good job, Cathead good. Distillery. No joke. Thank you for that. Cheers, indeed. Cheers. Well, cheers. Man. All right. As always, guys, like, subscribe, and share. Hit that subscribe button down there on the bottom, and uh, next time we release one, you can uh, you get the first views of it. Yep. You don't have to sit there and wait. So. It's delicious. It is delicious. Let us know what you think. We'll see you next time. Cheers.